very excited to, to be playing the Sugar Bowl against a very good Oklahoma team. Uh, you know, you look at Oklahoma, and the thing that stands out to me is they're very talented. Um, you know, one of the best offenses in college football. A quarterback is a phenomenal player. Uh, he's good in the pocket. Uh, he's probably even better when things break down. He can extend plays. He makes good decisions. Um, you know, the receivers, of course, the Westbrook kid is probably, you know, one of the better players in college football, but they've got some other weapons. Both their running backs are, are legit running backs, and they got a solid offensive line. Defensively, uh, they do a very solid job. Um, they uh, they know their their system very well. What they do, they do uh, very well. Today, everyone practiced, uh, but Devro Lawrence, Devro had surgery uh, earlier in the week, and uh, he will be out. Devro, uh, being a senior, that was a very tough blow. Outstanding young man. He did a very good job for us this year. So that's uh, really really feel bad for him. Uh, Marcus Davis was back out there along with everybody else. Um, everybody practiced full speed. Uh, it was good to have everybody out there. And so we expect all the rest of the guys to be ready for the bowl and be 100%. Uh, also signed two junior college players today, which is very exciting. Sal Can Canella, um, a tight end, about 6'5", about 225, 230. Uh, a basketball guy in high school. I think he only played uh, football for one year. He's got great ball skills, um, just did a very good job. He's kind of a half receiver, half tight end. I think he's got great potential, and uh, so we're excited to have him in the mix. Jarrett Stedham, uh, obviously the quarterback, uh, is a guy that we're familiar with. Uh, we started recruiting him way back when. Uh, we felt like he was the top uh, quarterback in the country when he came out, and then he chose to go to another school. So. For us to have a guy like him, uh, we think he's uh, an outstanding player, outstanding person, got uh, great leadership. So he'll be a great addition to our team. Uh, he will be here the 19th or the 20th, and he wants to start practice uh, early, which I think is a good thing to get around his teammates um, and all that. So very excited to have those two young men added on. They'll be here in the spring, which I think is good. Um, so we're very excited uh, with that. Questions? Yes, what's the latest with Sean? How's he doing with his shoulder? Yeah, Sean, uh, he practiced the whole time. Um, yeah, looked, looked to me like he was 100%. I mean, he's ready to go, and he did everything that you know the other quarterbacks did and didn't miss a beat. So that's encouraging. Gus, how will you, you in, in the spring, deal with the quarterbacks? Will, 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 they be, will it be a, a wide open competition? Yeah, we're going to let him compete. Yeah, we're going to let him compete and see who wins the job. Gus, how about uh, Cam that way? Yeah, Cam was good. Uh, he went through practice. Uh, like I said, he did everything. So uh, all of our guys that were out there, they did everything, the, the 12 periods that we did, without any kind of limitations. So I thought that was good. Having Sean and, and Petway and carry on yeah. healthier now, how important is that just for the, the psyche of the team? You know, I think it's very important, uh, you know, and you know, we were playing very good football when we were healthy, and uh, we were really in a rhythm. and and uh, run the ball, throwing the ball well. So it's good to have everybody back and uh, carry on being 100%. And he looked very good or close to that today. And uh, there was no hitch or limp and all that. And so, you know, we're going to continue to practice. We're going to be smart with those guys. Uh, but I think there's a good chance that, you know, all the guys out there are going to be close to 100%. And what about Byron Coward? Is he um, eligible? Yeah, football? yeah. He's good to go. And he's back out there today, too. So that was, that was encouraging. Are, are Sean and Cam with the type injuries where you want to see how they are the next day before you kind of really know for sure what your status is? No, you know, I, I don't think so. I think at this point, I, I think uh, I think I expect both to be ready to go tomorrow the same way. I mean, I'll, I'll let you know if anything changes, but, you know, I feel very good about, you know, where they're at. How about secondary guys, you know, Holsey and, and Rudy and, and Colin yeah. Davis been a little banged up. Yeah. All those guys good yeah, players. I think the last, you know, two weeks have been really good for those guys. And, uh, you know, they were all out there and participating, and uh, so that's good. It was good to have everybody back out there. So, so Stanton was full speed, too? Chris. What's that? Stanton yeah, Stanton was, Stanton was full speed, too. So I thought that was good. You know, he brings a different element to us, and uh, so it was good. What can you tell us about Wes and the Briss situation? I was talking with at least one school. Well, I mean, he's a talented coach. He did a super job. Um, you know, I mean, he's our defensive back coach, you know, right now, and I hope, hope we uh, – Hold on to him. He did, did a super job. Are you gonna offer him a new contract or a raise? I, I'm not gonna get any details, right. you know, about that. Other than he did a super job for us, and you know, he's a very good coach. He's one of the best in best in the business. 
What's your plan for Malik Miller? You think of playing the bowl game? You're going to go ahead and hold him out? No, we'll, we'll hold him out. He, he'll, he'll, uh, we'll hold him out and uh, you know try to get his year back uh, medical. And he's got a chance to be a special player too. We feel like, and you know, he was playing very good football before he got hurt. But uh, now he won't participate in the bowl. What, what will you try to do with Stidham in those? two or three cracks that he's able to do. Will you allow him to be the scout team quarterback maybe? You know, we hadn't got that far yet. I just know he wants to be out there with his teammates and, and get out there and do individual and stuff like that. I mean, we'll get a plan as it gets closer. But, uh, you know, I was pretty encouraged that he wanted to, to get out there in the middle of it and and uh, participate. So I think that's a really good sign. And, you know, as it gets closer, we'll figure out exactly what to, what he, to do. He, he can't practice in your own in the right? Correct. That's correct. Is it fair to suggest that your relationship with the Baylor, former Baylor staff had something to do with his comfort level with, with you? And with you, you, you know, it, it, it definitely could have. Um, you know, he was he's from Stephenville, Texas, and like I said, we recruited him coming out, but we kind of knew that it was going to be real tough for him to get out of the state of Texas at the time. And um, the fact that, you know, I've known Art for a long time too, you know, I'm sure it, it didn't hurt, uh, you know, the matter. but. You know, we're, we're glad to have him. Um, he's got three years left. I think that's good, too. And uh, he'll come in and compete for the, the job. What do you really like about him once he presents that you've been looking for and also just, you know, moving forward, how do you expect him to handle that competition where he was expected to be a starter? Yeah, well, I mean, he, he knows the status of how he come in here and compete. Um, you know, his skill set is uh, he's a very talented young man. You know, he, he can make all the throws. Um, he can run, he can extend plays, uh, very accurate. He's got really good leadership, and, uh, you know, he's, he's a mature young man. Yes, you talked about your plan for the guys who like red shirt and guys who hardly played at all yeah. during the fall. Yeah, and that's kind of what we did. We, we took the second half of practice just to really focus on those guys, uh, let the guys play a little bit. Tomorrow we'll even uh, do a little more individual with them and just try to develop those guys as, as best we can, have our position coaches work work with them, which is always good, and that's good about the bowls. Uh, for the bowl practice, you can kind of transition. You're not in a hurry. You're not in a rush. and You can really slow down and teach, and that extra time before you get to spring is very critical. And uh, so we'll continue to do that, um, you know, throughout the bowl practice time here when we're on campus. Is it, is it a big deal to have that extra time for a bowl? Because you spent really since August since you've seen him. Otherwise, it'd be March before you. Know. Yeah, there, there's no doubt about that, and uh, it's it's really good. Like I said, when you can slow down, you can focus on the the little things. Uh, I think is very important, uh, you know, for all those guys that redshirted specifically. Have you, spoke, have you spoken with John about the future now with another quarterback coming in? Just whether he's going to change positions or stay quarterback? No, no I, I think John will stay at quarterback and he'll compete for the job. Um, you know, John's done some good things, you know, and, and uh, you know, the fact that this is his first year in our offense, um, you know, he, he, he looked better today than he looked uh, during the season. So it's just a matter of him getting more reps, getting more comfortable. But, no, we've not talked about anything, you know, like that. How much does this alleviate depth concerns, especially considering what's happened the last two years where you're – scrambling the guy and get someone ready to go when the injuries popped up the end of the year. You, you know, I think depth at that position uh, obviously is very important. And, and I think uh, with Jarrett coming in, I think that, um, you know, really, really helps in that area. And um, that, that, it'll be good. How big was it that that way went ahead and announced that he was coming back to school, kind of take that away? Yeah. I think it's really good. I think, you know, any time a key piece of your, your offense right there makes that call and, um, you know, he'll have a chance next year and obviously staying healthy, there's a chance he could have a super season and he'll be one of our leaders too coming back. And so, you know, I think it's a very good thing, you know, for us uh, next year. What have you seen specifically from Jared as far as vertical passing goes? Because at least what he did at Baylor last season, he did a lot of deep throws and that was something that's been lacking from this offense yeah. last year. Well, I, I think you just said it. I mean, he uh, he throws a, a very good deep ball. I mean, uh, just his trajectory, uh, his arm strength, his accuracy. Um, he he does a good job buying himself time. I mean, you know, he's got um, he's got everything it takes to be a to be a very good quarterback. And the deep ball is definitely a part of his arsenal. What do you, what do you like about him as a runner, like on the side of the place? He came from a system and ran a lot of time, a lot of, a lot of yeah. options. 
Yeah, uh, you know he's he's a dual threat guy. I mean he can uh, he can throw the ball, he can run when he has to, uh, he can extend plays, he can make good decisions. Um, you know I think that's a, a real positive. Because you've thrown 26 or had 26 catches since you got here since 2013 to the tight end. Does Sal kind of open up that middle third of the defense for you? Yeah, you, you know I I think so. I mean that was really uh, what we were really wanting. We were wanting a a long body that had receiver skills. Um, you know that could that could be present some different things, and I think Sal really gives us that that look. The fact that he was a receiver in high school and only played for one year, a basketball guy. Um, you know, this past year in junior college, they did a lot of stuff in the red zone. I mean, the one on one 50-50 balls, he's really really good at, and you know, I think he's going to have a chance to get bigger too once Coach Russell gets with him. So uh, he's a guy that can run and. So I think they really open up some things for our offense. So we're really excited about him. Guys, in, in, in your two best years as coordinator and head coach, yeah. 2010 and 2013, you, you had a big threat at tight end. Yeah. How, how big was that in those years? And is that kind of what leads you? Is that where you're trying to get back to? Yeah, yeah there, there, there's no doubt. Um, you know, tight end is, is one of those areas that, um, you know, we needed more depth this year. And, um, Needed some speed there too, so uh, you know that's we, we feel we feel like this that Sal has a chance to really help us immediately, and I think that was attractive to him, the fact that uh, you know we we needed some help at that position, and he's seen what we've done in the past, and you're exactly right. You know when we were at our best, we had a threat at tight end that really um, you know could do some things, and, and Jalen Harris is a guy that is getting better. I mean he really did some good things blocking, and I think that. He'll be a guy that will continue to improve, too. Is there such a thing for, in your offense as a tight end that just does tight end stuff, or is it someone who double trains an H, too? Yeah, you, you know, I, I think, um, you, you know, when you've got the versatility to do both, that's when it really helps you and kind of goes back to that, being able to put 11 guys on the field and try to run as close to every formation as you'd like. Um, and within that, have the hand down and play some H back. Gus, what would you like to do in terms of, you start introducing a little bit of, of Oklahoma now with the older guys yeah. and he's into the game plan. Yeah, what we're going to do the next uh, today and the next two days is going to really focus on us more than anything and the development of our young guys. And once we get to Saturday, we'll go full force on Oklahoma and start trying to get in a routine of a regular Tuesday type practice. And then we'll go Wednesday, Thursday, and just really start getting our routine. Uh, but right now, we're just really working on us, working on the fundamentals, getting back in the flow of things. Uh, just our base offense and our base defense, and you know, come Saturday we'll start, you know, getting after Oklahoma as far as the prep goes. How often do you talk to Art Browns? Uh, you, you know, from time to time, just a couple times a year usually. Right. Do you know Kendall? Uh, a little bit. Right. A little bit. Yes, Jake Moyer is on Oklahoma staff now. What do you remember about your time working with him when you got here together? Say it again. I said that Jake Moyer is on Oklahoma staff now. What do you remember about the time? When you got to work yeah, team. you know, you know, uh, Jay's a Jay's a good coach. Uh, Jay's one of those detailed guys. Uh, did a super job for us. Obviously, was here. When we won the national championship in 2010. And, you know, our special teams uh, were very solid that year, and uh, you know, he coached our tight ends, H backs, which they were very solid too. So he's a good coach. Uh, he's a very detailed guy. Have you spoken to any of the other players, juniors, considering the draft, whether that's Carl or Fred? You know, Carl's a guy that, you know, he'll, you know, decide what, what he's going to do after he'll make an announcement. He went through senior day, and, you know, Carl's probably going to be a first-round pick. You know, the, the other guys, uh, a lot of times you uh, will kind of send in your paperwork as far as seeing where you would go and all that. But uh, at this time, you know, I'm not ready to, to say anything regarding anything else other than Carl will, you know, he'll tell you after the season, like he said, but he went through senior day. Lucy, <laughs> someone asked about a couple of young guys. A few more. Um, Prince Sammons, is he healthy? Is he practicing? Where's he working? He, uh, he did practice today. Uh, he did practice today. I think that was good. He's one of those guys that, you know, these this bowl practice will be very good for him. You know, he battled the injury when he came in with the foot injury, and um, so it was good for him to be out there in pads. And, and which position was he? He's in? playing tackle. So, I mean, I, we're just training him right now just to play tackle and have the ability to, to do both. But uh, he's still in the early stages. But I really feel like these next eight practices will really help him and give him a foundation, you know, before we get to spring. Uh, he's a very talented young man. Uh, he's a big, strong guy. Um, you know, we're very excited about him. Can you How see about the Stephen Davis? Sorry. 
How about Stephen Davis Jr.? Where's he playing? Uh, he, he's not out there with us right now. Okay. Injury? Uh, he's just not out there with us. When you see the news coming out of Wake Forest about plays being leaked to other teams and things like that, does that give you extra concern? I see the look on your face right now. Uh, what, what are we talking about? Have you not heard about that? Uh -uh. Well, someone who worked for Wake Forest was leaking out information about their offensive defense to opponents okay. in the ACC. And okay. He was fired for it. How much as a coach do you worry about certain things getting out like that? You, you know, of course, I. I worry about stuff, you know, I, mean, I, I worry about stuff, I just, yeah, I'm probably, yeah, I'm probably one of those guys that, yeah, I, I worry about stuff, and usually, you know, we don't have a whole lot of access because of that, um, but no, I didn't know anything about that. But. How much of the, the Last question. earlier bowl practices are, are oriented towards get a head start for next season, especially with the young guys? Well, I think that's that's what we're doing. You know, you, you kind of you get your guys ready for the bowl, and then early on, the 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 just as important is get developing those young guys for the future. So that's a great thing about uh, you know having eight practices before you get to the bowl site, and uh, so it's kind of a half and half. Both of them are just as important as the other. So it's great for us as coaches, you know, for the development before we get to swing practice. All right, thank you. All.